Okay, so I have zero participants on right now, but I was answering some questions about four minutes ago um, before my Spotify decided to play Cardi B and I just got shut off, which is really, really annoying, but hopefully, hopefully some of you guys will jump back onto the call. Really sorry about that, guys. Hopefully we'll have some more people jumping onto the call as quickly as we can. Okay, cool, we've got three people. Oh, so sorry, you know what? My, <laughs> my Spotify played Cardi B and YouTube instantly was like, nope, shut it down. I, guys, I got shut down, it's a lock off. Woo! But we're back, we are back. It's just sad because I like to have a vibe going. I love some music, so mm, we're gonna have to talk in silence. But if you guys have any music going, then just enjoy whatever tunes you have got for you at the moment. What was your question? Can you remind me what it was? I was in the full flow of things and I can't remember what your question was. Hit me with your question stick. What was your question? If you could just remind me what your question was, I can go back to answering that for you. Oh, I just started trading in the phase of learning, <laughs> but didn't start doing it. What do you recommend for beginners who want to day trade? Oh yeah, so um, thank you, thank you, thank you. So basically what I was saying was, stick to one strategy, stick to one strategy. Find a strategy that you like and then just, just deep it, like do it every single day even if you're getting stop losses, just keep maintaining that strategy because you are going to find the, your perfect points of entry. You are going to start to master that strategy. And that is when you're going to be consistent over a longer period of time. Like I said, you're not going to be able to measure consistency if you're doing it for a week and then you change. You really need to be doing it for four weeks minimum to see if it works or not. So definitely stay consistent and just don't drop off. Just keep pushing. You're going to get there. Kyrie asked, how was your trading week? I had a fantastic week this week, actually. I had about 8% growth with my um, my own markups, which was really fun. Um, I try not to trade too much during the day. I don't, I don't like to force trades. I, I feel, what's the word here? What am I? I don't feel like I'm a hunter, you know? I like the market to come to me. So maybe like a Venus flytrap. I like to analyze the market, practice patience, set my buy stops and sell stops. And then when the market comes to me, I snap that, catch those pips. I don't like to force trades or chase the market. So um, in terms of my trading week, I was able to be really profitable literally just by analyzing, setting buy stops and sell stops and letting them run, catching 30 pips at a time, 30 pips at a time. And that just works so much better for me. I hate sitting on the charts all day. I'm really active. If you follow my Instagram accounts, multiple, you'll know that I literally can't sit still. So I'm doing ballet, I'm working out, I'm running around, I'm just doing all sorts. So I don't really have time to sit on my computer all day. But I have started scalping as well. <gasps> so um, I've started trading binary. I don't know if you guys know about binary, but it, it's honestly changed the game. And I think I might be turning into a bit of a scalper. I'll let you know how that goes. But I'm planning on growing my account by 8% every single day with that scalping strategy. So mm, we shall see. <laughs> how long did it take you to become profitable again it took me about four months to become consistently profitable only because I was messing around with different strategies and not being consistent uh, but that's a really imp important part of the learning process so you know mess mess up make mistakes because that's all really important to do 
use those first six months. The first six months of your trading career is going to be a is going to be a mashup. It's going to be a mess, and you need to be okay with that because um, that's going to help you to make the mistakes to learn, so that you can be a long profitable trader in the long term. Um, so don't if you need money now, get a job. If you need money now, get a nine to five because that's going to be the the quickest way to get some money now. Whereas trading is a lifestyle, it's a long, it's a lifelong skill and a life lifelong hobby. Um, so try, try not to think about becoming profitable now. Try to think of it as how much are you learning right now? How long did it take for you to become um, good at analyzing charts? How long did it take for you to master a strategy? Those sort of things. If we focus too much on profits, we tend to get a bit lost in the source. And then we start doing things like trading out of desperation and comparing ourselves to other traders, which is super dangerous as we know. Like, just listen, you're going to, if you stick, if you stick to trading, the profits are going to be a byproduct that's going to happen anyway. The profits are going to come. So you just need to stick with what you've got, stick with what you know, and keep learning because you're going to hit those results. I promise, promise, promise you. There were times when I <laughs> I believed, I was like, this isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. And you just have to stick through it, okay? Um, why don't you swing trade? Right. So I've never been a swing trader at all. I love to have my hand kind of, on the trades. I don't like to sit back and let things do its thing. I think it's because I'm a control freak at the end of the day. But I feel like I feel like I'm changing. I feel like I'm growing up. I basically <laughs> okay, you guys you're on the call with me. Let's just let's just get into it, okay? And I'll tell you guys all of my trading my trading secrets. This is my trading journal to be fair, so I may as well. So what I have done is I have split my trading accounts. And I'm now using one account for swing trading. However, it's not, it's like this strategy that I use was typically a day trading strategy, but because of coronavirus and the volatility in the market, they're turning into swing trades. They're turning into intraday or swing trades, which originally I was like, Eek, I hate this. I prefer a day trade. I like to be in and out within six hours. Um, but it's turning into a day trading, um, a swing trading strategy just because of the market situation. And it's important when things like this happen to not get stuck. We need to be, as traders, we need to be able to adjust with the market. Sorry, I've got paint in my hair. I've been painting my room again. Um, so I've got paint in my hair. <laughs> we need to be able to pivot and adjust with the market and not get stuck and think, oh no, I can't trade my strategy anymore, but how can we adjust? So I've split my trading accounts and I'm gonna use one of them for more of a swing trade. So I just let those run for the week. And then this other, this other one, <laughs> I am scalping, woo, which is binary, which Kyrie knows. Binary is lit, but you better be right with your trade or you'll get fucked up. <laughs> Listen, I started learning about binary last week at four in the morning every single day. Trust me when I have mini heart attacks. It's literally like, it's anxiety inducing and it's a heart attack waiting to happen. But I feel like, I could enjoy it. I was like, I was testing my pulse to see how how calm and collected I am during these trades. And I think I'm okay. I was a little bit, I'm not really too trigger happy. Like I'm not a gambler. I'm an Aquarius and a Ravenclaw at heart. So I'm super logical. So I really don't get tempted by, by FOMO or greed. So yeah, we'll just see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated. But as you know, I've put 250 pounds into my binary account, even though we're not really allowed to talk about money, but sorry. Um, I've put 250 pounds into that account and I'm hoping to grow that by 8% every day. If you guys have a compounding calculator, you can, you can calculate the maths on that. At the end of 30 days, if you remember this, if you remember this session, message me or ask me on another session how my results were, because I will tell you the, the percentage that I was able to able to hit. Wish me luck, guys. Fingers crossed. Hopefully I don't come out of this at the end like a, like an absolute gambler. Hilarious. Um, what time frame do you trade on and how long do you keep your position running? So again, it really depends on the strategy you're using. So I prefer to do a markup on the one hour time frame. You Also, you've got to um, make sure you're looking at the larger time frames just to get a sense of where the overall trend is on the weekly. 
um, so that you can be trading with the trend. You never really want to be counter counter trading just because you know that you're 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 risking. You're risking if you're counter trading. You're better off going with the flow. Um, but I like to mark up on the one hour, and then I'll set alerts. If you use Trading View, you can check out Trading View. But um, all the links are in my videos. I'm not sure if any links will be on here, but um, in my videos, I do post the links to to the websites that I use, so that you guys can see them. Um, I set my alerts, and then I go in and do deeper analysis on the 15 minute, and that is when I get my pew pew sniper entry. We like to have a really nice, clean, precise entry so that we can be minimizing our drawdown. Like drawdown is part of the game, we all know that, but I hate drawdown. <laughs> Don't we all? I prefer the color blue. I know YouTube colors are red, but you know, we prefer blue, right? So, um, depending on what strategy you're using, like with scalping, everything's done on the one minute and the five minute, which is pretty mental, but um, it just depends on what you're used to and what you enjoy doing at the end of the day. Sorry, I've got a coffee. It is it is five o'clock, five o'clock in the evening here in the UK, but um, I've, it's, it's been a very busy Saturday, very, very active. Um, did you get a demo account before getting into a real one? If so, how long have you been on demo? Pretty mind, my pretty mind. Hey, very good question. Having a demo is so important. Even though I'm a live trader now, even though I'm a profitable trader now, I'm always, always using a demo. If you don't have a demo, you're a fool because it is there to help you. It is there to practice. Um, so in the beginning, I was on a demo account for one month. So I did my initial education and... Um, my practice on a demo account throughout the whole of August into September. And then I went live mid-September and then just started to do, do mad things <laughs> and mash up my account, as we all do. Like, I've, I'm not afraid to speak openly about it because this is this is real. And, um, you know, when you're new, you're, you're going to be making loads of mistakes. Like, how many times do we fall off of a bike until we start riding properly, you know? So, um that's what it's all about. Use your demo to make the big mistakes, okay? Don't do it on your real account because you need that money, right? <laughs> um, have you ever experienced a bad loss? How have you overcome it and how have you handled your emotions? <laughs> you guys, you are searching my soul here for the deep info and I'm, I'm going to give it to you. Okay. My biggest loss, and I'm going to be very real, because people ask me, people who are interested in trading and they want to start, they will always ask you, and put something in the chat box if this has happened to you, right? So you tell people, oh yeah, I'm, I'm trading, or I'm learning how to trade and it's really fun, and they say, um, have you lost money? And it's like, yes, yes, of course I've lost money. That's the whole point. You risk, but you also profit. Risk is part of the game. Yes, we can have fantastic results, you know, 95% results, whatever, whatever. But you're also risking. So losses are a necessary part of, of the game. And it's exactly the same as when you start a business, you have expenses. No one would question that, right? Because you're still, you're still spending. So it's exactly the same thing. You've got, to, you've got to think of your loss as your expenses. Okay? But in terms of the bad loss, yeah, I've had a pretty bad one. So I... Um, was using a strategy with IM Academy and I managed to build an account from 50 pounds to 2,500 pounds in under 30 days, which was incredible, like mad, mad growth. Um, and it just so happened, like we hadn't, listen, we hadn't had a stop loss hit. We hadn't had one stop loss hit for, for about like three months. It was ridiculous. But on the day that we went into lockdown in the UK, I had a trade open. It was GBP USD. I had a trade open. And it was that night that Boris Johnson came onto our screens and told us we were going into lockdown. And because I had gone, I moved from my flat to my family home here, um, you know, to be with my family for lockdown, I'd forgotten to set a stop loss that morning. Which meant that during the night, I woke up at three in the morning to see 60% of my account in drawdown. And that was when I had the conversation with Jesus. I'm not even religious. And I was praying. <laughs> I was like, please. <laughs> it was bad. I had the sweats. I didn't cry. I didn't cry. We don't need to cry, guys, because at the end of the day, profits is profits. We're not losing 
So long as we're not losing our original capital, it doesn't matter. You can always make profits again. OK, it's just the amount of hours that I would put into that was kind of like, oh, my God, very. <laughs> it cut me deep right here. So 60 percent of my account gone. And you know what I did? I just closed. I just closed the trades because at the end of the day, you haven't lost your capital. You've only lost profits. So I was just, I just had to be like, get over yourself. Um, and you know what? The next day I just laughed. I just laughed about it. And I continue to laugh about it because otherwise you'll just cry, you know, and it's not that deep. So long as we've got our health, nothing else matters. Um, so keep moving. Some people, when they start trading, will lose three trades in a row and be like, this doesn't work. I quit. And that's, it's a very weak mindset. Like we know that trading isn't for wishy-washy people. We know if you're, if you're a trader, it means that you first and foremost are brave for starting anyway. And if you're still trading after loss, after loss, after loss, you are a strong person and no one can take that away from you. If you haven't heard it before, I'm telling it to you right now. Sorry, I'm just going to grab my charger because my battery is dying. Oh, my charger is literally right here next to me. Sorry. Anyone else in the UK? Is it really windy where you are? Because the weather is terrible today. We've had trees blown over literally on my road. Okay. Um, can't remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, losses. <laughs> ah, yeah. Basically, you're going to have big losses. You're going to have losses small. You're going to have losses big. And you need to be mentally prepared for that. And if you're not going to be able to bounce back, stop trading right now and get a nine to five. I'm giving you guys tough love, but only because it's true and only because I want you guys to commit. I don't want you to be sad. And I don't want you to be upset when you have, have stop losses hit. It's it's a game at the end of the day and it should be a fun hobby. And so long as you've got appropriate risk management, then you should be fine. You should be fine and you should be profitable. The only reason I lost 60% of my account was because I forgot to put a stop loss and that was my own mistake. So write this down. Please set a stop loss. Love from Jessica. Hello, Miser. Miser, we have 12 people on the call. Ah, this is so exciting. I always feel like I'm going to be alone on these sessions. What demo apps would you recommend? Okay, we need to stop with Trading212. This is an app that everyone is telling me about, and I've been on it. Guys, it's not a good demo app. It's not, it's essentially Trading212 is a gambling app, in my opinion. There's zero space for you to do your own analysis. It doesn't give you an array of information. You're literally just looking at numbers going up and down and you're jumping in and out of charts. Does not make sense to me. You may as well go down to the betting shop. Please don't use uh, Trading212. If anything, download MetaTrader 4, which is the industry standard for, for trading apps, and um, practice with a demo account. Do your research and find a broker that works for you. I love looking for new brokers. They always call you and ask you questions and make you feel really special. So do some research, find a broker. You can open a demo account with them and play with their Monopoly money. And um, you're gonna find a strategy and a style and a broker that works for you. So please do that and don't use trading 212, please, because it's just awful. And you're gonna start creating some really bad habits for yourself where you don't do any analysis. And that is just, that is not the one, okay? Oh, I've missed questions. Oh, guys, I'm sorry I talk a lot. I'm just trying to get through these. Um, what are the two moving averages that you use? What are the three top indicators that you use? Thanks. Okay. I, You know what? I like an EMA. An exponential moving average works just fine. But you do know that it's... The thing with an EMA is that if you turn your candle, your candlestick chart into a line chart, it's exactly the same. They just push the time, the time frame forward a little bit. They just move the line forward so you can see what the what the average was about five minutes previous. So it's sometimes I don't really tend to find that it's too helpful in terms of indicating where the market is going to go. So yes, EMAs can be very helpful, but I tend to use other indicators. I love an Ichimoku cloud, guys, it, you just can't go wrong with a cloud. I also love the RSI and the stochastic. And also a new little one that I found, let me know if you've heard about this. It's called No Sure Thing. Really, really fun indicator. Let me know if you've heard of it because I'm doing more research on it and trying to implement it into my own personal strategy. 
Um, what lot size is good to profit big at big to profit big and trade smart? <laughs> okay. Pens and paper in hand, everyone. 0 0.01 lot size per 100 pounds in your account. 0 0.01 lot size per 100 pounds in your account. So if you've got 200 pounds in your account, 0 0.02 lot size. If you've got 870 pounds in your account, 0 0.08 lot size. Make sure you're using appropriate leverage for your account size. Otherwise, your account won't be able to handle the way that it moves, okay? Um, and in terms of a good, you know what? My account size is looking quite healthy, so, but if we're talking about like when you're starting quite small, but a lot size that does a nice return, guys, 0 0.03 or 0 0.04 lot size gives a lovely return. You can make 40 pounds in like a couple of trades. It's a really, really nice lot size. So even if I've got a large amount in my account, I won't really trade any more than a 0 0.04 lot size because I'm, I'm not in a rush. I'm not here to maximize my risk. So once you, I, it's easy to say once you've got the money in your account, I get it because everyone wants to hit those larger numbers because then you can relax. Then you can like pull back and go into, go into cruise mode. Do you know what I mean? But 0 0.03 or 0 0.04 lot size, they're still, they're not massively risky um, lot sizes. So the risk is small, but you can still make good money on it. And also only really trade Euro GBP because that payout is one-to-one, -one, is the highest rate that you're gonna get in terms of um, currency exchange rates. Okay. I would like to take one second to say you're beautiful. Oh, and natural hair is amazing. Lord have mercy. Lord with a T. I love it. Yeah, guys, I have massive, massive Afro hair. This is this is it quite tame at the moment. I'm Jamaican and German, for those of you who, who don't know. I have an Afro hair page, an Instagram page dedicated to my Afro hair and teaching people how to grow their, their natural hair really, really long. When it's straight, it's super long. So maybe I'll straighten my hair for you guys next week. That could be fun. Um, yeah, she's pretty huge and I love her. She's part of me and we, we conquer this world together. So wherever I go, she goes and she has a complete mind of her own. Um, but she's really, really happy. And I, I get it cut quite a lot. Like I trim my hair every, every like month or so, and it just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. Also, I don't know what the lag is. I feel like people are responding to what I'm saying, but maybe it's, I think there's just a lag. So if I, if it's taking some time, I'm sorry. My internet hates me. Thank you for your answers. How much leverage do you use? Again, my favorite leverage, 0 0.04, 0 0.03. You literally can't go wrong. I'm not greedy. I'm not, I'm, I'm not desperate. I'm just enjoying the process of trading. And if I use larger lot sizes, I start to have more anxiety. So the lower the lot size I use, it's so chill. Just enjoy. Do you trade on commodities? I love, ah, okay, I love gold. I love trading gold because the way that it moves is really, really nice. However, I don't like to trade gold unless I've got 500 pounds minimum in that account or a thousand. Actually, a thousand for stocks. Like I love to trade stocks like DAX 30. Mwah. Delicioso, huh? But again, you're going to need a minimum of 1,000 pounds in that account. Otherwise, it's just not going to handle the movement. And for gold, 500 pounds in your account. So at least if you've got like a 0 0.01 lot size, it's not gonna wipe your account. You, got, you need to give it some breathing space. Um, but yes, I love commodities. I love stocks and I love gold. I've recently bought Bitcoin. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. I think it's because I don't know enough about it yet. I'm just really into Forex at the moment. So I mean, I bought Bitcoin. I use Coinbase. Um, so if you guys want to learn how to buy crypto, again, you can follow the links on to my, on my videos. I've got some links in the comments section that has links to Coinbase, TradingView, all those other websites that can help you really get started on your trading journey. Um, I love your page. Oh, thank you so much. That actually means a lot. Sometimes it can feel like when you're putting content out on the internet, it can feel like you're preaching to the wind. But um, I'm glad you guys like it. And literally, I'm, I keep making this stuff for you, for those who find it useful. And literally, don't hesitate any time to send me a message. I say in every video, slide into the DMs because people are asking me to do things all the time. 
like new videos to make, like think like questions that you actually have. I have the time right now to answer them. So let me know um, whatever it is that you want to see and I can do that because hashtag got nothing else to do. How much did you use? Did you open your real account? <clears throat> 200 pounds. 200 pounds. I wouldn't really suggest opening with any more than 200 pounds because you're going to need to train your mindset to change the way that you view money. Okay. So, um, if you open an account with 500 pounds and instantly you see maybe 10% drawdown, that's 50 pounds. And your anxiety is going to, it's going to make you do some silly things. It's going to make you double up on your trades. It's going to make you pull out early. Um, so you need to start training your mind to see drawdown. So I would say 200 pounds is a nice amount. You're not really risking too much. You know, 200 pounds, you can make that back in two working days. Um, but also it's not so low that you can't see growth within maybe a 30, 20 or 30 day period. So 0 0.02 lot size is still nice. It still moves. So, um, yeah, give, give that a go. 200 pounds. <clears throat> Do you recommend any books? Yes. Read. Okay. Here are the books that changed my life. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Think and Grow Rich. Trading in the zone. And those are the only ones I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. Think and grow rich. Rich dad, poor dad. Trading in the zone. Trading in the zone is fantastic for traders in terms of developing your mindset and how you view the market. <laughs> There's this one quote from trading in the zone. I, I listened to it as an audiobook, And he said, the markets don't hate you. And I was like, Oh, okay. Because you feel like the market hates you. No matter what you do, you're constantly seeing a stop loss or you're constantly seeing drawdown. It's like, why? Guys, the markets do not hate you. They just need to learn to love you. No, no, no. That's wrong. The markets don't hate you. You need to do better. It's like cats. I love cats. They don't take any BS from nobody. And they do what they want at the end of the day. You can feed them, give them all the love and attention, and they'll still hate you. And I think it's fantastic. <laughs> Classic. Um, and it's so true. Like, you can do the most in terms of your analysis, and you can have all your confirmations, all your ducks in a row, and the market will still go in the opposite direction. And that is fine. That is what it does. It doesn't care about you or your problems. And that's something that I had to realize, which is why now I allow the market to come to me. I set my sell stops and my buy stops, and I let the market come to me. If it doesn't want to come my way, that's absolutely fine. You know, um, we're here to catch pips. We're not here to try and manipulate the market into doing what we want, because we're going to come very frustrated. It doesn't work that way. Um, thanks for your advice. I only use EMA 20. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the MACD. BO, that is perfect. You don't need any more than that. And you've got to remember, guys, that indicators don't tell you what to do. I feel as though indicators help us with entry. Indicators help us with entry. That's what I use them for. I prefer to do my my trend and candlestick analysis. That's what that's the main thing, right? That's the main ish, right? Though. The indicators are just some fancy tools to tell you, you can enter now and we'll see what happens. You've got to think of it like that. If you start to put all your faith into indicators, you're going to get very frustrated and I promise you, you're going to need a box of tissues next to your desk. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Guys, we don't need no tissues, okay? We just need coffee and a clear mind, maybe some lo-fi and some, and some snacks, okay? Because it's a show. The market puts on a show for us every day. Who knows what's going to happen? Let's just see. And you know what? When something happens when I when I that I don't think is going to happen, I had to retrain my mind. Instead of getting upset, instead of being like, "Oh no, ah, oh, dang it," I'm now like, "Oh, isn't that interesting?" If you're in, if you're ever on any of my live trading sessions, you're going to hear me say, "Oh, isn't that interesting?" And then we just move on and find the next one, guys, because trading is supposed to be a fun hobby and it shouldn't make us be quaking in our boots and reaching for the tissues. Okay. Uh, yes, we want hair videos too. Ah, go on to my hair YouTube channel. Okay, you can set it's Afro is massive. I try and post regularly on there. 
but I am I am more on my Afro is massive Instagram page and again just message me if you want to chat but um I won't put I won't put her videos onto here because then I'm just like cross-pollinating my channels so go and search afro is massive on insta and youtube and you're going to get absolutely more of me there also if you don't know i do this a lot i'm a dancer so i just like stretch with, i'm just sitting with my legs in the air all the time how did your family friends react to the fact that you got into trading oh my pretty mind oh wait no that's somebody oh okay let me answer this top one the one above first any other youtube advice you found actually useful i feel there is so much bios in the <laughs> joseph okay there's so much shit on the internet. I hate it, I hate it so much. And this is why I chose to make this channel because I was searching on the internet. You know what I was actually looking for? I was one. I was searching YouTube for people who looked like me. You know, representation is super important. And when I was, you know, doing my research on how to start trading and blah, 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 all I was seeing was like, just white men shouting at the camera and I, I just that it didn't click with me I wanted it I wanted the information I wanted to learn how to trade but it just wasn't helping me to engage with the information like it was just very aggressive marketing and originally I did search for women who trade I didn't really really find much that really connected with me again still very aggressive marketing and I looked for black women who trade and there was zero Eventually, I came across Hannah Forex. Some of you guys may know her. Her stuff is incredible. Um, she's fantastic. She's a beast trader. Um, she's been in the game for a, for a long while, and um, her content is great. So if you don't know her, look up Hannah Forex. She's great. Um, and that was after watching her stuff. I was like, mm. she is UK-based. She's young like me. She's... Um, you know, a woman, <laughs> and she's really calm, and I just, I just absolutely love that. So, um, yeah, I hate all the stuff on the internet, and I really try and I don't do too much research on the internet. To be honest, I go to reliable sources, um, and hopefully, you guys see me maybe as a bit of a reliable source. I hate, I hate aggressive marketing, and I hate people shouting at cameras. It doesn't need to be like that. Like, I feel like there's so much hoo ha on YouTube, and actually, sometimes sitting in your bedroom with a cup of tea and having a conversation, just, it's just so much more real, you know? I hope that was an okay answer. My pretty mind, how did your family or friends react to the fact that you got into trading? My family were quite supportive actually, but my family have always been really supportive because I'm a dancer anyway. So they, they we're a very arty family. So they accept that we don't go down traditional paths in terms of lifestyle choices or, you know, like, or occupation. Um, but my friends were a bit more skeptical. They would, they didn't really talk to me about it much. And I, and I get it and I understand it because it's not everyone's cup of tea and you can't force someone to like something that you're into. And again, not everyone's business minded or not everyone's into cinema or not, you know, people are gonna have their, their people are skeptical because of fear at the end of the day. Like we see a lot of scams on the internet anyway. We have films like Wolf of Wall Street completely wrecking our, <laughs> wrecking our industry reputation and creating stereotypes for us. So when people hear that you're getting into trading, it's like, ah, hmm, A, she's being scammed, B, maybe she's a scammer herself, or C, she's gonna lose everything. That's probably what people are thinking. That's probably what people are thinking. And that's okay, because at the end of the day, I'm sure all of you have had the conversation with yourself. You're, you've said to yourself, I'm gonna make this work. Or maybe <laughs> it's a different situation and I have to make this work. That was for me, I had to say to myself, I have to make this work. Um, so yeah, my friends don't really ask me about it too much, but you know, if they want to know more, then you know, I'm sure they'll ask me but I try not to get too bogged down in that. People don't need to care about everything that you do. As long as they like you and they love you and respect you, that's the most important thing, okay? Don't get down if people don't rate you for doing trading. People will try and say, oh, you just you just want money. And it's like, don't let that shame you, guys, because no, money money can't buy happiness, but it gives you options, right? And money is money is so important. Money is right up there with air. You can't buy food unless you've got money. So why are we, why is it often that we are shamed for wanting it? 
in order to be sustainable and healthy. It really does baffle me, but I think that's because of the conditioning that we have received during years of school. And, you know, they don't teach us about money in school. They don't. They teach you to fear it. They teach you to be in one stable job forever so you can pay taxes and then you die. And the fact that we are here, if I'm assuming everyone in this chat, there are 18 of you in the chat, you are all traders. By, by choosing to become a trader, you are challenging that notion completely. You know, you're creating your own economy. You're, you're being your own bank by being a trader. So that challenges what people um, assume is normal. And if it makes them feel uncomfortable, you're going to get pushback. They'll only ask more questions and become interested when they see results. They want to see you make money. And that's, again, because they are fearful. And it's people like, like you guys in the chat, like us, we haven't needed to see proof. We just need the opportunity. And we grab it and we think, we're going to make this work. Don't let people bring you down, okay? Because people will try. And you just got to laugh. Because one day they'll start trading. It's fine. Um, what's my favorite indicator? Indicator. My favorite indicator is the Ichimoku cloud. <laughs> I don't even care. And I like the guy, like I can change the colors. You know, what's not to love? It's a bit more graphic. I also like the awesome oscillator. If you don't know what that is, check it out. It's really fun. Awesome oscillator and Ichimoku cloud. Nice, it moves nice, you get me. What is the win rate of your current strategy and the risk ratio? Interesting question. Okay, so this is really funny because I do all of my journaling and I actually haven't like done the actual maths because I've got all of my trades written down. So I can see how many greens I've got compared to reds, but I haven't actually done the maths on that. I need to create a formula for that. But I reckon at the moment it's around 85% win. I get more I get more blues than reds at the moment. So that's all I really care about. Again, we can do so much analysis, but so long as I'm being profitable at the end of the week, like I don't care, <laughs> I'm just happy. But you know what, that is good. So BO, I'm gonna write that down as a note for me now. See guys, we are in a constant state of learning. Okay, my, I'm, oh, my notebook's under here. Okay, I'm gonna write this down as a thing for me to do this week. I need to calculate actually what is the win my win ratio for my strategy. And then I can share that with you next on our next Q&A. I can't have been on this call for 40 minutes, guys. I thought I was only gonna do this for like half an hour because no one would come on, lol. Um, I just came in, I don't know if you answered, but how much would you say you lost before you actually started gaining? I'm in a losing streak. Ah, oh, Kenya Sanford, Kenya, that's such a fun name. That's, oh, Kenya, Kenya, I love that. What a pretty name. Um, You're gonna, you're gonna lose. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna be in a losing streak. Like if you've just started. Oh, for you, I'm, I'm in a losing streak. Okay, started. I started with two hundred pounds, and I would win and I would lose, and I would win and I would lose, and I would win and I would lose. So like I'd be hitting three hundred back down to two hundred, three hundred back down to two hundred, four hundred back down to two hundred. It's gonna be like that for a while until you really get to grips with your strategy. It's gonna be. I'm being really real. But the better you get at entry and just sniping and then taking your profits, that is when you're going to start to see more consistent results. Sorry. Um, so I never actually lost any of my original capital, which I think is a very important note to make. So in terms of overall losses, I probably lost like a lot, like a couple thousand, a few thousand. But that's because I grew it and I lost it and I grew it and I lost it and I grew it and I lost it. And then I grew it massively and then lost it massively, but I never lost that original capital that I've put in. So really my losses are zero. Do you see what I mean? So long as you don't blow an account, you're not losing money. I hope that was helpful, Kenya. OMG bit, I don't know what that means. <laughs> OMG Bitcoin? Huh? If you guys have any um, thing, anything you want to tell me about Bitcoin, you can tell me because I'm starting to get into crypto and altcoins. We'll just see what happens. Have you ever considered to become a full-time trader in a few years? No. No, no. I am not full-time trader. <laughs> no, because 
Um, I'm a dancer. I'm a dancer and choreographer at heart. My my heart is in the arts industry, and I use trading to fund my lifestyle so that I could be a dancer and choreographer. I don't plan on becoming a full time trader. I become on becoming a. I plan on becoming a very successful trader, but I won't go full time. Even when I start having babies, I'm still going to be in the studio. I'll probably, well, you could say at the moment right now at home, because all I'm doing is trading all day, every day. So you could say I'm a full-time, a full-time trader right now, but I don't plan on being a full-time trader for my future. This is just a hobby that is going to keep funding my lifestyle pretty much forever. And I know that because I've worked this hard. I've been, I've been doing trading now for nine months and I've come this far. Like, why would I stop? You know? So you don't have to become a full-time trader to make, to make good money. Just um, build up your account. And then when you have nice, nice amount in your account, what's a good amount? 10,000? 10, 10,000 in your account. If you're only catching 10 pips on a one lot size, you're literally done. You're literally done. How easy is life? What is your trading Instagram? I also want to, want to keep posting videos and keep up the hard work. Oh, thank you. Ah. My trading Instagram is called at trade creatives, trade creatives. Why don't I, I'll write it in the chat right now or I'll send a link. Can I do that? Can I do that? That work. Okay. Well, that's my Instagram. It's got lots of pictures of me and some other bits and pieces. So <laughs> take a look at that. Follow me and slide into the DMs. If you have any questions, I have a social media addiction, so I'm always on there. Um, how long did it take you to trade with no emotions? <laughs> after my big loss, after I lost, um, like 2000 pounds, that was when I became emotionless because I've ex once you've experienced the worst, like that was the worst thing that could have happened to me. You know, I needed that money. That was, that was for my house. Like I needed to pay my bills and I lost it because I made a mistake and I didn't put on my stop loss. Stupid. But I've now experienced the worst case scenario for me. So now nothing else scares me. And it's so funny because when I'm, when I'm doing my training and when I'm helping other people, I probably sound really blasé and it's like, ah, oh, if you lose like 20 pips, what is that? Like we don't, or if we're going into a trade, I'm, I'm like, guys, we don't need to catch 20 pips. And everyone's like, oh, we, but we need to catch this one. And I'm like, no, no, we don't, we don't need 20 pips, you know? So, um, it's taught me, taught me my, my emotions are gone with trading now. I'm not desperate. I don't have FOMO because once you get burned, you're going to feel the burn forever. <laughs> But it's good. It teaches you. My brain has been totally reprogrammed after that moment. I had the conversation with Jesus. I sweated for like three hours. The next day, I came walking out with the smoke like a brand new trader, a brand new woman. Literally, I feel like I'm like made of cast iron. Nothing can scare me now when it comes to trading. Uh, one of my classes from Bear Ball Traders, I've heard that Forex is extremely hard for beginners compared to stocks. What is your opinion about it? Okay, this sounds like you've gotten your information from somewhere, maybe not reliable, um, because stocks are incredibly difficult. You've got to remember, I say Forex is great for beginners. Forex is fantastic for beginners. If you know nothing, trade currency pairs. Day trading stocks is a madness. You can make massive money, but you can lose a lot of money as well. I'm assuming by what you mean by easy for beginners to trade stocks, is that if you're just giving your money to somebody to trade for you, or if you're just buying a stock, if you're buying a share and letting it sit? I think maybe you need to do some research as to what you mean. Are you, good, are you gonna be your own independent day trader of stocks? Like, what is it that you're actually looking to do? Just give me a little bit of description below in the comments now, and I can answer that better for you. Give me more information. I can answer that for you when, you, when I see it. Any more tips for beginners who like to start trading? My pretty mind, you have not even started trading yet. Start, um, okay, if you want to learn how to start trading, message me on Instagram today, now because we can have a conversation about how to get you started in a way that is safe, in a way that is secure. It's gonna be risk-free. 
because a lot of people try and learn how to trade off of the internet and it's very very bad because the banks know how people learn off of the internet and they want everyone to learn the same thing so that they know how to wipe you out of the market so you want to learn how to trade like the banks so if you want some advice as to how to start trading message me on instagram and i can help you literally today because i've got nothing else to do okay um how long have you spent in sim before you move to live okay so yeah i was on my demo account for one month and i wish i stayed on it for longer that's all i'm gonna say on that if you are on your demo account stick to it as long as you can stick to your demo as long as you can one month minimum okay that's all i'm gonna say Thank you. I haven't blown, but I'm still in there. Kenya, I'm so glad you haven't blown your account. Keep going because you're going to see those results. I promise. And let me know when you start seeing results. Again, message me on Insta because I want to stay connected with y'all and I'll follow you back as well. Um, Jeremy, what's your zodiac sign? I'm an Aquarius. I'm a deep Aquarius um, and I'm a um, Virgo rising Capricorn moon. And um, Leo Venus. No, Leo Mars, Sagittarius Venus, Leo Mars. I do have a lot of Leo energy in me though, and that is because my mum is a Leo. Um, so even though I am an Aquarius, I'm definitely a Virgo rising. Um, but I have a lot of Leo energy in me, and I like that's because of my mum. This might be a bit woo-woo for, for people. <laughs> and I never used to like believe in zodiac signs at all, but I just think it's fun. Um, and it just helps you to, I don't know, be self-reflective, guys. Also, look at the moon. Why not? It's cool. I don't understand tape reading. Do you mean tick charts? I think maybe it's just um, terminology phrasing that I don't understand. Um, I think by tape reading, I'm thinking maybe of tick charts, where it's just like a line that's moving up and down. Again, I wouldn't recommend using a line graph in that sense. Um, if you can convert that, that tape reading to candlestick charts, that might be more helpful. Um, like tape, tape reading is useful for some, for some types of trading, like for scalping and things like that. But, um, I wouldn't use that if you're fresh, you need to learn the basics and how to understand a candlestick chart. That's going to be the, the most important thing. And then you can move on to that later. Just correct me if I've gotten that wrong. Okay. Hey, Kenya. Yes. Oh, wait. Maybe you can share your lot size so we don't fall on the losing streak. Ah, yeah, guys, small lot sizes. The market isn't going anywhere. You've got the rest of your life to trade big lot sizes. Just start small, please. Please start small. I hope I don't seem like a stalker for following both your trading and personal Insta. I will, I look, I'll look out for you. I will look out for you. That's so funny. I love it. Just follow me everywhere. I don't, I don't care. I'm on this internet for free, so... Could you please make a video on your full graphic analysis, your reasoning from A to Z? Why did you take a trade at that point? Why didn't you? And give us your explanations on things. Ah, okay, I can do that. You know what, guys? So, ah, there's 19 of you on the chat. So this, for those of you who are on here, you are gonna know. Because obviously the markets are closed on the weekends and the weekends can be very boring for us, I thought I would do some more live things on YouTube. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow at five o'clock, Wait, no, that's time with my team. Three o'clock? <laughs> I will, guys, follow me on Instagram because I will put an official time for when I'm going to go live. But I'm going to go live tomorrow. And I'm going to do a live markup of my charts for, in preparation for Monday. So what I'll do is I'll do a live analysis on the charts with you guys so that we can have some nice trades to go into Monday morning. That is what I'm gonna do. So if, if you want that A to Z and what I'm looking at and why, then we can absolutely do that together. I'm gonna to be doing that tomorrow. I will post the time that it's gonna happen. But if you have me on alert, so you subscribe and click the little alert button, you should get a notification through when I'm going live, I think. I think, just let me know if not. But I am gonna go live tomorrow and do a markup of my charts in preparation for Monday's Monday's trading. So just let me know if you're gonna jump on. I wanna see you on there. And we can take some trades together, how fun. But that is tomorrow. Um, I was greedy and started with a 0 0.1. Ah! No. <laughs> no, Kenya, bad Kenya. 0 0.1, 0 .5. 0 0.5. How much, can I ask how much you had in your account? How much did you have in your account and you're doing a 0.5 lot size? I would love to know. But yes, 
stick to 0 0.01, 0 0.02, it's a 0 0.01 per 100 pounds in your account. Just think of it that way. So once you've got a thousand pounds, yes, just do a 0.1 lot size, but there's no point over leveraging because you're going to be losing a lot and it's, there's no point. Um, thank you. I'll stick to 0 0.01 until I double my account. Fantastic. Do I use MetaTrader? Yes, I use MetaTrader. Meta <laughs> oh, you had a thousand. Well, that's fine then. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. As long as you're not over leveraging, it's cool. Do you use MetaTrader? Uh, yes, I do. MetaTrader 4 is what I use to do my trading. I don't have the uh, the version for Mac because it just they just hate MacBooks, apparently. Um, so I only use MetaTrader 4 for iPhone. I don't use MT5. Um, so if you need any MT5 support or laptop support, I won't be able to help you because I don't, I don't know my way around those interfaces. But MT4 for mobile phone, I'm your girl. Um, cool. Guys, it's been nearly an hour, and I've answered loads of questions, but the, there aren't any more questions for me to answer. Let me know if you guys have any more questions. I'm, I'll answer a couple more if you have any, but if not, I will um, I will say adieu, adieu. But if you guys have one more question or anything, just let me know now. If you want me to shut up so that you can enjoy the rest of your Saturday, let me know. <laughs> How many trades will you have running at once? Kyrie, that's a fantastic question. So. The question is, how much are you willing to expose your account to the market at any one time? How much are you willing to expose your account to the market at any one time? So if you have 100 pounds in your account, with appropriate risk management, you should have a 0 0.01 lot size, one trade at a time. <clears throat> at any one time, you're exposing that amount to the market. So if you've got a 0 0.02 lot size, okay, 200 pounds in your account, you could have one 0 0.02 trade open at any time or two 0 0.01 trades open at any time. Does that make sense? So if you had a 0 0.04 lot size, 400 pounds in your account, you could have two 0 0.02 trades or four 0 0.01 trades. So split your leverage. Does that make sense? At the moment, I'm only trading one trade at a time. And that makes me so much more relaxed. I have zero anxiety now because I know exactly what I'm trading at any one time. I know exactly how that currency pair is moving across all the currency pairs that day. One at a time, guys. The market isn't going anywhere. Okay. If you plan on being on this earth and alive and well for the next 60, 70, 80 years, you've got all the time in the world. You don't need to be in five trades at once because you're rushing. And as soon as you start doing that, you are gambling, okay? So one trade at a time just keeps me carefree. That and a lot of yoga. <laughs> um, trading View, yes, Trading View is fantastic. I use it every single day. I pay for pro account because I like having all the bows and the bows and whistles. So um, again, you can find the link to Trading View on my videos. I have them always in the comment section or the info section. And you can also follow my profile actually on Trading View if you want to do that. That makes sense. I can share my share my trades with you. Maybe we should start doing that. <laughs> um, um, when did you start using leverage? Always. Uh, when did I start using leverage? Um, always. You're always leveraging. No matter how you're entering the market, you're always going to be leveraging something, right? By choosing your lot size, you're choosing your leverage. So always using leverage. And I've always had good leverage, to be honest. I've never really over leveraged my account. I over leveraged once by accident where I put in a 0 0.1 position. Actually had a heart attack, but it was fine. I closed in profit, but I never did it again. Don't over leverage. It's just a bad habit to get into. Be a, be a calm, safe trader, and you will live stress-free, my friend. Taz Taz, that one's for you, for free. No, tape reading is an old technique that's not based on graphics. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I've never heard of a tape reading. I'll tell you what, this is good research for me as well. I'm gonna write this down. Look up tape reading. Maybe I'll learn something today. Thanks for the lesson. Will I ever over leverage? No. No. I'm too scared. I felt, I felt the fear. I don't need to over leverage ever again or ever in general. Once, once you lose 
a big amount of money, that's going to be your biggest lesson for you. And you're going to learn not to do those silly things. And um, you're going to be a much more sophisticated trader. Guys, we have started trading to have lifelong, like debt free, anxiety free. We just want to be comfortable, right? We don't need to be millionaires, but we need to, we just need to pay our bills and have enough food in the fridge at the end of the day. Like that's all we want. So we don't need to be over leveraging. We we will be getting we'll be getting those big payouts soon, eventually. We go to university for three years to get a degree. Could you wait three years to have five hundred thousand pounds? Absolutely. So we can do that without over leveraging, and we're going to get there. And when you get there, I want to know so I can celebrate you. Yeah, we're going to get there together. I promise. You know, trading is different to one. Thousand pips flip an account. Lol, you'd be trading for 10 years just to hit six figures. You know what? No, that's not true. That Kyrie, that is not true. And I'm gonna tell you why. Pen, pens and papers. Now, I have a whole presentation on this. It's my whole math section for my kids. Okay? Not that I have kids when I teach people. Um <clears throat> pens and papers out. So you have a hundred pounds in your account. If you're planning on making 5% every day, right? 5%, let's say you only trade four days a week. You're not trading every single day. Four trades a week, that is 20 pounds, okay? 20 times, oh, hang on. I've, I've completely forgotten this. I'm trying to pull it from the back of my head. Okay, so basically, taking, um, making 5% every single day, that will, using a 0 0.01 lot size, that will double your account in 30 days. 30 days is not a lot to double your account size. When you're trading with a 0 0.01 lot size, 5% growth, you're essentially risking two pounds to make five pounds per trade. And you'd have to lose 50 trades in a row to wipe your account. Nobody is that bad at trading. Nobody is that bad. So with a 0 0.01 lot size, you can double your account in literally 30 days. Not even 30 days. You just need to be consistent with your percentages. 5% daily increase, you will double your account within the month. And next month, you'll have 200 pounds, 0 0.02 lot size. You double your account again. To get to the next 100, it's going to take you half the time. It's not going to take 100 years, I promise. Yes, 0 0.01 moves very, very slowly, and I hate it. That's why, I, I ugh, you know, bah. This is why I say 200 pounds is a good number to start with in terms of a brand new account um, because it just moves a little bit faster. 0 0.01 feels very frustrating. So if you haven't got amazing patience, don't start with 0 0.01. If you're scared, start with 0 0.01. Probably my best advice, but you're so right. Like you've got to have crazy patience. And I do, like I, I used to be super impatient, um, but now we are chill. I think it's because we're at home with nothing nothing else to do. So it's like, you know, and also learning how to scalp has helped me to kind of, like scalping is so fast. So that's kind of giving me the bump that I need. <laughs> it's keeping me excited, okay? Um, if you're catching 50 pips when you win and don't lose that much, plus trading every day and assuming you have trades, it's like some barriers. it will take seven years. It w Kyrie, it won't take seven years. <laughs> it won't take seven years. <laughs> You will get to the next lot. You don't have to stick to 0 0.01, but if you're catching 10 pips per trade on a 0 0.01 lot size, it's only going to take you 100 trades to get to the next one. And if you're doing 100 trades divided by 10 days, it's only 10, 10 trades for 10 days. You could be up to the next lot size in 10 days. Okay? It's really not deep. It's going to be fine. You're going you're gonna to get there, I promise. Yeah, 100 trades in a row. <laughs> you will lose eventually. You will lose eventually. I'm not saying that you're going to win 100 trades in a row. But with the power of um, probabilities, you're going to be more profitable than you are losses. That's the whole point. You need to have a strategy that has that gives you more profits than losses. Okay? So, yes, we say it'll take you 100 trades. It'll take you 100 profitable trades. That's what I mean. 100 profitable trades. <laughs> it's so manageable. Literally, don't worry. Um, and it feels so stressful. I get it. Like, it sucks. 
And we all just need to have enough in our accounts to help help our problems go away. And I totally understand, which is why I, got, I think this is why it's important that we are all able to come together on a space like this, have a cup of tea and just have some real talk and just be like, hmm, this is hard because it is. And at the end of the day, we love our mentors and we love the people who are inspiring us and who have who, who have done it. But at the end of the day, we don't care what's in their accounts because we are, we're not seeing it in our accounts, right? I'm seeing it in my accounts now because I've been working for nine months. Stop loss, stop loss, stop loss, stop loss. Taz, Taz, there's no beef. <laughs> there's no beef. Halal the beef. There's no beef. I would always advise swinging if you don't want to over leverage because you get the same payout, but far less time is that some chance. Yeah, for sure. And I need to, this is why I'm starting to swing trade a bit more because um, I like to, I'm, I'm enjoying letting things go and then spending the rest of my time scalping. I think this is what I'm going to do now, but I will let you know and we'll just, we'll just see how the scalping goes. But I think binary is very, very exciting. And if I have good results, then I'll definitely share with you guys the strategy that I'm using so that you can maybe start to see, oh, there's a hair in my tea. <laughs> so you can start to see some more profits um, sooner, you know, and that's the fun bit. Uh, are you actually trading binary now? Nice. It's fun. It's very different. I started learning this week and it's very, very different. And we'll just see what happens, but I'll keep you guys updated. I'm always posting on my stories on Instagram at Trade Creatives. If, you, if you're if you not following me, I'd love to see you on there. And just say hi, like you saw me on YouTube. So I can give you a little wave and be like, hey team. Um, but yeah, guys, it is six o'clock. I've been talking for an hour to you guys. That's actually crazy. But how that's just flown by. I have so much fun talking to you guys. Um, so my tasks for this week are to look at take reading and to calculate my win ratio for you guys so we can actually talk about that on another time. I'll make sure I do that. Um, and tomorrow I'm doing my live markup. So I'm going to be marking up my charts in preparation for Monday morning. So if you want to jump onto that, literally um, I'm going to put the time because I did set a time on YouTube, but I can't remember what time I set. So I'm going to check the time. I'm going to post it onto my Instagram. So if you want to join me for a live markup session tomorrow where I go through everything and my strategy, then jump on and I will see you then. If I don't see you tomorrow on our markup session, then I will see you guys probably on the trading floor somewhere in the market. Have a lovely evening, guys. Have a glass of wine or a gin and tonic because I think that's what I'm going to do. And I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.